all these goobers out there have always put this 4% crap in the market. The problem is, is when you go down these stupid nerd rabbit holes in these Reddit threads with these morons who live in their mother's basement with a calculator, and then you then you put that out into the dadgum community, and then people go, I don't have enough money. It's hopeless. I'll never be able to save enough to retire. A million dollars should create for you an $80,000 income, boys and girls. Now, most of you probably already know Dave Ramsey, who's perhaps the most influential media personality on money and finance. But on an episode of his show, he said something that, how should I say it lightly? Something you don't expect a person of his stature to say. Maybe a 15-year-old TikToker, maybe your neighbor, but not Dave. Uh-uh. So basically, what happened a while back is that a 30 years old called Ramsey on his show, saying that he was close to financial independence, and that based on a video of George Camel, which is, by the way, on Ramsey's team, he learned that he should withdraw around 3 to 4% per year from his portfolio to be sure to safely live off it for the long term, which is what you might know as the 4% rule of investing. So, this is what happened. Okay, I'm a little confused because I don't know what the hell George is doing doing a 3% withdrawal rate because that's absolutely wrong. You don't need to have a 3% withdrawal rate. That's ridiculous. Was maybe, it 4 to 5%? percent? Like maybe, No, it shouldn't be 4 to 5%. It ought to be more than that. I mean, if you're well, making then. 12 in good mutual funds and the S&P is average 11.8, and if inflation for the last 80 years has averaged 4%, if you make 12 and you need to leave 4% in there for inflation raises, that leaves you 8. I'm perfectly comfortable drawing 8. Okay, so what the Ramsey is saying here is that if you invest 100% in stocks, which, by the way, for a person in retirement, I'd say it's a quite risky asset allocation. When you invest in mutual funds that he says give 12% per year, even more than the S&P 500, you can basically withdraw 8% per year without problems or doubts. What Ramsey does is basically kids' math. You get 12% per year, minus 4% historic inflation, 12 minus 4, 8, so you can withdraw 8% and always be on the positive side. Well, you can expect kids math from a kid, but not from him. A public figure like him should know that whatever he says is like Bible for thousands, potentially millions of people worldwide. So giving such an irresponsible suggestion, in my opinion, is just wrong, that wrong. And it disappoints me because I agree with so much about what he says about living debt free, about saving and living a frugal life. But when it comes to investing, uh, not everything. So there are different reasons why Ramsey is wrong. First of all, the long-term S&P 500 return is not 11.8%, but it's around 2% lower. In fact, we're more around 10% if you consider the last 30 years. But the main reason is a thing called sequence of returns risk. Sequence refers to the fact that the order and timing of poor investment returns has a huge impact on how long your retirement savings last. This chart here comes from Charles Schwab's website and shows what happens to two investors who both start with a million dollars portfolio, take initial withdrawals of $50,000 with 2% inflation adjustment each year after, but then experience a 15% drop in portfolio value. Investor 1 experiences a 15% decline during the first two years of retirement, Investor 2 instead during year 10th and 11th. During all the other years, both portfolios grew at 6%. Notice that, despite the average long-term return of the portfolio being equal in both cases, Investor number one ends up with no money after 18 years, while the second investor still has $400,000. So as you can see, it's not about average return, it's about the sequence of the returns. There is a couple of important points here to discuss. Some of you might say, well, okay, but we have a 6% total return and investors are withdrawing 5%. It's pretty close. So I'm gonna show you later in this video why even withdrawing 5% with that 10% total return can lead to disaster based on historical returns. Another point is that only if you never withdraw anything from a portfolio can you actually use long-term historical returns to try to predict how you will grow in the future. If you withdraw money from it, the sequence in which the real returns happen become far more important. Another point is that Ramsey suggests 100% stocks. And it's true that 100% stocks has historically the highest long-term returns compared to bonds, but still, it's a risk asset allocation. And why is that? Exactly because of the sequence of returns risk. Stocks have the highest sequence of returns risk because they are more volatile. If you retire with a mixed portfolio of stocks and bonds, and you are right at the beginning of a bear market or a crash, this is going to affect you less than if you have 100% stocks. So if you ever wondered why they suggest a higher percentage of bonds the older you get, 
Even though everybody knows that stocks give a higher performance over time, is probably the most important reason. Before showing you with practical examples and a really good website why the 4% rule is actually pretty precise and not so conservative, I want to go back to the assumption of Dave Ramsey when he says that the S&P 500 returns 11.8% per year. I showed you already that we are actually at 10% per year on the long term, but the interesting thing comes out when you put the sequence of returns risk in the mix. Regardless of what the market did in the last 100 years, how sure are we that we're going to get 10% in the next say 20 years. This table from Cody Garrett from MajorToysMoney.com shows you what you would have achieved investing in the S&P 500 in the past based on the holding period. So for instance, if you held your investment for just one year, you could have had anywhere from negative 43.3% to 54% based on a total of 97 different years, which are between 1926 and 2022. If you held it for 25 years, which is also the base of the 4% rule, you could have gotten anywhere from 5.9% to 17.2%, which is obviously a really good result, but still you see that at 10, 12%, it's not really a sure thing. So now that you know what a sequence of returns risk means for your long-term retirement, let's see how often during the last 50, 100 years, you could have actually found yourself in a situation of starting your retirement in a really bad year, like in a crash. This is macrotrends.net. And what I'm showing you here is the historical data of the S&P 500 since 1928. I'm gonna turn off here inflation adjusted because I wanna show you absolute values. So you can see that we've had bad years with losses about 10 to 30%, actually pretty often during the years. But what I want you to focus on are the long periods of time in which the market stayed flat for many years. We've had, for example, one in 1969, where the market went from 103 in January 1969 to basically the same value in June 1979. 10 years of zero growth. That's <laughs> crazy. Another famous one was the lost decade between 2000 and 2010, or should I say 2012, where the market didn't grow because of the dot-com bubble burst in 2000 and the global financial crisis in 2008. So why are these situations relevant? Because if you find yourself retiring shortly before one of these periods, which are inexorably going to happen again in the future, and you base your nest egg on a 7 to 8% withdrawal rate, you're definitely gonna run out of money. So Dave Ramsey, with his assumption, is going against the famous Trinity study. There was a research paper from 1998 by three professors of the Trinity University in Texas that proved why 4% is a sustainable withdrawal rate if you want to be sure it lasts during your whole retirement. A million dollars should create for you an $80,000 income, boys and girls. All right, let's see now if a million dollars actually creates a $80,000 yearly income, like Dave Ramsey says. For this, we're going to use FiCalc, which is an app that simulates an investment based on your inputs and historical data. Let's keep a duration of 25 years, a portfolio of a million dollars, 100% in stocks, so no bonds or cash, because remember, this is the assumption that Dave Ramsey makes, and we're using the constant dollar method of withdrawal. Instead of the 40,000 that is suggested here, which is 4% of a million, we're gonna use 80,000. And we have here adjusted for inflation. That means that the amount is increased every year by the inflation. Now let's look at the results. The app made a total of 128 simulations, starting from 1871 up to today, always with a 25 years range. So you're gonna have a simulation for the years 1871 to 1895, 1872 to 1896, and all the way up to 1998, 2022. Getting back to the overview of the results, you can see that only for 46.9% of the cases, namely in 60 out of 120 simulations, you would have been able to keep withdrawing 80,000 per year for 25 years without running out of money before. But in 68 scenarios out of 128, more than half, you would have run out of money before the end of the 25 years. And this is even not accounting for tax. It's like they invested everything in a Roth IRA. Now, if we go down, you can see that 73 portfolios out of 128 end up with $250,000 or less after the 25 years. And as you've seen, 68 of those end up with zero before the end of the 25 years. Coming down to the individual simulations, you see the results of every time period. And whenever you see an X, you basically ran out of money before the end of the 25 years if you had started retirement in that starting year. So you can see here that if you retired with a million dollars in 1996, 1997, or 1998, Following Ramsey's advice to withdraw 8%, you'd have run out of money before the end of the 25 years. Let's click now, for example, at 1998, 2022, and you can see that in the first two years until 2000, you would have increased your portfolio to around a million two hundred and forty-eight thousand. But then the dot-com bubble burst and a global financial crisis 
together with your 80,000 withdrawal per year, would have depleted your portfolio in 15 years. So you can see that there is a lot of cases in which you would have failed in the past. So honestly, even assuming that the future is statistically gonna be exactly like the past, which is not sure, withdrawing 8% per year from a 10, 12% return index fund is not a clever thing to do. Now, since I talked about the 4% rule as a right benchmark, I wanna show you what happens if I set here $40,000 withdrawal, which is exactly 4% of the million. And as you can see, the probability of success goes up to 99.2%. And this goes to prove that, as opposed to what Dave Ramsey says about stupid studies on investing, the Trinity study they came up with a 4% rule is indeed a reliable study and one that people should actually consider when planning their retirement. Nevertheless, always remember, there are no real rules of budgeting because every situation is personal. Maybe you have enough funds that you can live well with 2%, but you decide to withdraw 8%, and if the market goes bad for a couple of years, you're able to lower your withdrawal rate to 2% without actually hurting you so much. Again, every person should make their own calculation, but if you're planning in your retirement and you wanna come up with a sum that with a good probability is gonna give you peace of mind, in retirement and not leave you penniless, I believe that the 4% rule is the best benchmark there is. I know Dave Ramsey mainly for his advice on getting debt free. I believe it's really great on that. I mean, when it comes to saving, living a frugal life or getting out of debt, I think it's one of the best you should listen to. But when it comes to investing advice on funds, I'm not really sure because it talks such a great deal about actively managed mutual funds, which in my opinion is a lost cost against index funds. And honestly, I'm not sure why I said this about withdrawal rates because I believe it's an hazard, honestly, to say something like this if you're such a famous personality in finance. I mean, I can say stupid stuff because I'm a no one. <laughs> I'm kidding, don't worry. I always try to say the truth and nothing but the truth to the best of my abilities. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If I could give you some interesting information, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also drop a comment for me in the community because we all want to know your opinion and start interesting discussions. So don't be shy and write something. I wish you a great evening, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.